neat. Next up, we got battles. Battle worn insomniac. And hello, yo yo. Welcome. What were they asking for? Advice on Peacock? How to deal with close range stuff and just zoning. So I will preface this by saying I'm not the, or I'm not very experienced playing as Peacock. I can tell you what I know she likes to do versus people because I've seen how she plays versus characters all the time. But all of this all of, all of this info for the P specifically will be coming with an asterisk of you should probably like I kind of know what I'm talking about but don't be afraid honestly and I'd, I'd encourage you to ask like Baghdad or Taco or uh, any other P you can reach out to and just be like hey can you fact check this real quick <laughs> Although this is a pretty good matchup for you. Run start. So I'm not gonna go like super super down the rabbit hole, but you chose a run start where you want to run away. Perfectly normal. Backdash is actually one of the riskiest <laughs> ways for her to do that round start because she can get caught up in start animation. If you want the like almost unpunishable round start you are up backing calling an assist jump heavy punch air dash backwards jump heavy punch you're basically full screen they have an assist walling them right in front of them and then you just get the setup zoning that is like the peacock gold standard round start and it's the one you'll see a lot and then you also always have other just more basic round starts just default up back back dash again isn't bad it just can't can kind of get caught so I might encourage you to choose other options. Yeah, and so Yo is also saying up back jump heavy kick. So Avery, air dash backwards, jump heavy punch. A any way for you to set up hitboxes while you're also going backwards is going to be superior than this. But just just a little brief introduction to P round starts and things you might want to start thinking about. Looks like we have a pretty basic zoning pattern done, though. And you... So, knowing how to adjust your zoning is important, but you don't have to until they show they know how to deal with it. Get the George out. Or, Lenny. That is the one thing you'll have to look out for in this matchup. And so, what did you... Okay, so this is kind of... Uh really like picking at strings but you might have been able to react to that if you didn't wreck it into the box card george after and so these are kind of the sort of things you need to be watching especially on zoners but this is generally kind of true of the game and period you kind of want to be comfortable enough with where you are and your character to not really ever have to look at them and that really helps reacting to some garbage like the umbi command grab which I'm not going to hold you. Like, it's quote-unquote slow, but it, it, it it's, it's fast enough. It'll catch you if you're slacking. That's actually kind of a nasty first bait. Gotta really kind of be expecting it in situations right there. So were you at full in Dizzy? No, you were at zero in Dizzy. Actually, you don't really have an air option to be mashing, but... Eh, you get bursted. What you gonna do? It happens. We're pressing buttons again. Oh. That was not the option. For the record, Argus will just get like reflector reflector lensed in the middle and did you have your you had your assist out right yeah so you wouldn't have been able to dhc if they did it 
So just something to keep in mind, Argus is not going to keep you safe. They just keep messing up the punish. <laughs> now you actually get to chip them out. Extend save me. I think you can just kill if you route this. Oh no. Yep, run away, play space game. You're fine. That's not gonna work. Yep, nice. Well played. If I wanted to nitpick, you could car off that gun to win the game, but it's whatever. Okay, so, yeah, here we go. They dealt with it properly this time. I really like that you were hitting the assist. Oh no, that's actually really unfortunate. we get caught using stand heavy punch? Oh, we were going into item drop. Again, uh, if you're watching, uh, especially because you hadn't committed to a special yet, you could have gone into teleport and avoided the throw. Appeared behind them, gotten the punish. Oh god, why do I have hiccups? Man, that DP is very sad. Did we not have time to tag bandit? Oh, we accidentally called him. Okay. Weird. Tech out of the corner. Yes, I like it. Now we're mashing. Don't spend, I agree. One touch game. Just get a good clean hit. Uh, no confirm. We are jumping a whole hell of a lot on Big Band Neutral. While he does have some nice air buttons, he also has some nice ground buttons, and getting predictable with how you're jumping is the easiest way to just get completely blown up in this game. So, try and, try and tone it down a little bit. He has pretty good ground space buttons. For the July round start. Okay, you asked about dealing with people that are this close to you. You're not zoning this close to you. It's, you can. And I'm not going to tell you to never do this. You just have to recognize it's incredibly risky once you're in this range to try and continue zoning. The, the one thing you want to try and have out of your like zoning tools in this area is be holding M item. And so it really just shuts down their approach because if you can react quick enough... If you see them press anything, <laughs> you can have M item come down and trade with them, and it usually trades well for you. So that that's that's the one thing you kind of want to be thinking about as people are getting close. You're like, okay, I need to start aborting the zoning pattern, figure out if I either want to get an M item out, 
commit to running away, commit to trying to scramble a little bit. Those are kind of your three options. But we DP them out. So let's go back to this. We use punch move a lot. So yeah, again, you're way too close to be trying to set up zoning. When, the, when they're in the air above your head, nah. That ain't it. Uh, no confirm. Not a bad grab tag. And so you do have heads to get yourself out of situations, but I will say you opt to mash a lot. I saw a whole lot of punch moves, and sorry, uh, punch move is ending. And I also saw we've seen at least one beat extend as well as a couple SSJs. Know that doing it as much as you're doing it becomes somewhat predictable and you will likely start getting baited and punished for it. Especially because you've already shown you're kind of just pressing buttons. Already, you insta-burst almost every time they hit you with a burst. Zoning. Okay, I don't want to see that either. And we raw tag demand. Again, we're kind of opting into mashing a lot. And while it has been working, the more consistently you do it over a longer set, people will pick up on it and start bopping you for it. But it has been working, so I can't really knock you for it, especially because Squiggly is definitely volatile in her mix. She doesn't really have a way to keep herself safe. Instant burst. Keep it simple, just level 3. Yep. I agree. Nice. Yeah. Um, someone in chat popped in. If they're a good player, they'll notice it quicker. So, for instance, it took me, honestly, the first game, but especially the second game for me to say, okay, you're a masher, I'm just going to start burst baiting you until you show you'll respect it. Um, that sort of deal. Different, different people will pick up on things at different paces. Typically, a better player would, but that doesn't mean quote-unquote, worse players won't see it quickly. Some players are really good at, like, playing the player. Like, they're, they're trying to do it now. They're trying to burst bait you. They messed it up a little bit. Um, but they might, like, suck at neutral rather than... Um, and that's what's holding them back rather than not being able to play the player matchup and the Yomi sort of deal. But zoning is zoning. This is not the time to be using... Never mind, it works. Do we have these confirms? Oh, we messed up.
dodge move when they're in the air. Don't agree. Raw tag the band. <laughs> We're still mashing. This is a getting to be a lot at this point. I'd encourage you to stop mashing one, not only for your like your character safety, but two, you need to learn how to actually play defense. Because if mashing is your only defense, the second someone shows they know how to deal with that, you don't actually have anything else to fall back on. And it's really hard on Ban specifically because of how large he is and rising uh, instant overheads have different properties versus him versus other characters. But you, you gotta be able to rely on other things. So we, we want to try and fight our way out of this corner. Yeah. So, th my point stands there. You're on, on block, your push blocks are honestly not at great times. And it's kind of hard for me to tell you exactly when is a good time. But you're not getting them off you, which means you're doing it ineffectively. Another thing to kind of start thinking about, I don't think I've seen you use teleport in neutral at all, like as an escape tool. While it is something that can be punished if you use it too much, it on its own can get you out of corners because they have so many things they need to think about in the mental stack that sometimes you can kind of just get away with going, bye-bye. Eh, Call assist. We don't quite get our zone set up. No confirm. You could have been punished for that. Argus is not a safe super. Because of the gap in the middle, almost every character has. Aunt. <laughs> basically full screen punishes. Some can't quite do it from full screen, but I'm pretty sure everyone can from mid screen. Uh, we kill. Moinder. Oh, they're all on this stage, I'm just not realizing this. Too, a little bit too close for you to try to zone. Yep, so like, here's what I'm talking about when I say M item. You, you called that at a really good time there and just held it as a threat so they couldn't actually commit to anything. I don't know if you saw exactly what you're doing there, but it was really good. Ooh, this is a lot of meter. Please use it to get out. Yep. Get out of the corner, we drop the conversion though. Oh, uh, yep. So. A small thing about squiggly players. When they SBO and you're in that awkward middle range, if you don't react fast enough to like just kind of jab her out of it and swat it immediately, throw. Just just throw the squiggly. They are nine times out of ten waiting for you to press a button for them to push block you into the SBO. The other one tenth of the time, they're trying to throw you themselves. So you either get an opening on them or you tech their throw. This this is it's just something that has really helped me in this quickly matchup. And there we go, raw tagging again. Yeah, Yo Yo was mentioning 
when you see Squiggly commit to a double jump, you can kind of just commit to teleporting if she's running forward at you and just getting yourself out of the corner and running away to set up zoning again. A lot of reversals. That didn't drop. That was not counter hit. You could have reacted to this. This super has absolutely zero hit stop on it. The only time it does is if they serious sing beforehand. So if they do this to you, hold up forward, it won't hit you, you get a free punish. Stay mashing. Just do it again, jump him out. Yep. Although I think you might have been able to get Silver Cord in there. <laughs> Silver Cord actually wins there. But they jumped. Is this gonna crash the game? <laughs> Let's go! Okay, these are on beta. Yeah, it, it would have been close, but I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it would have actually started up in time. That's not the right. There we go. Alright, three games left. P versus Black Dahlia with an unfinished kit sounds not fun for the Dahlia. Man, she covers that distance real quick. I don't know how much advice I'll be able to give you versus her. Because I honestly have not seen almost any Dahlia play. No idea how to evaluate it or how to play against it. Oh, get hit low. Especially on QM, some people will just default test if you're a masher. It's kind of like first or second burst bait, or first or second reset. It's like, yeah, I'll just go for burst bait. See how they're running things. And now he knows you're a dirty little masher. That little nugget of knowledge is locked away for later, for when he resets you again. just happened. Why did we SSJ here? As, for, for the record, SSJ into Lenny is not safe. Oh no, I do the same thing, Yo-Yo. I, I mean, I'm one to opt for burst baits, period. But, I, if I know someone's mashing, I do not stop burst baiting until they consistently don't burst anymore. Oh my god, he got the parries and then didn't actually get the punish. No, like, it, no, yo, yo, when I mean when they've consistently stopped bashing, I mean for like two games straight, three games straight have stopped mashing, I'll start working in a bit more mix. But I will still implement burst baits. One, because I like them. Two, because I'm a parasol player. Three, because mashing is good in this game. I will not be conditioned. So, like, we, we talked about this with Squiggly. Oh, okay. No, we could have done it. So, here. You can kind of just wait here and see if she decides to spend her mobility resource. If she uses her tracking dash... You can just H teleport here, get out, be free, be fine. Because there's no way they can commit to anything else. Um, and so they, they can't punish you for leaving because they're flying 10 miles per hour in the other direction. So right there. 
It's definitely like not a super easy thing to react to, but it's something you gotta be looking out for as Peacock. <laughs> oh wow, that does beat the raw tag. That's actually really cool. Is that not a projectile burst? No, that was a golden burst, okay. We still mash him though. Don't let anyone tell you it didn't work. I'll just encourage you to think about when you're doing it. Because the second it stops working, you look like a fool. That's not real. Wait, what? Why didn't we just... That was really weird. Did we just miss our DHC? Whatever. That, that was a little sketchy. Confirm. A little bit of spaghetti. Somebody touch my spaghetti. Ah, the P mirror. The fun. I think this is the first time I've seen him use teleport control here again. I honestly cannot tell you much about this mirror besides teleport actually lets you call out them over committing to zoning. Really good reactions to know that they're trying to punish you and just baiting it out. That was a really good punish on the teleport. Really unfortunate drop right afterwards, but I like it. Not to quit enough. Oh no. Again, Tempany is not really actually safe either. Wait, if I'm not mistaken, that was the last game? Yep, okay. So, things I want to talk about. I talked a lot about the mashing. Stream, please don't do this to me at the very end. I'm gonna keep going because it'll It'll get it anyway. Fingers crossed. Um, whatchamacallit? We, we talked a lot about the mashing. It needs to be toned down. You will get punished for it. This is not to say stop it entirely. Showing that you're willing to mash is important. And there is like a spectrum of uh, mashing to not mashing, being patient. And th there, there are different ranges where one can be argued this is still effective but I would definitely say you go well past the part of the spectrum where it's helping you that you're mashing and it starts hurting you because you do it so consistently that one it's incredibly predictable two it feels like it's almost your default defense which means you're not practicing actually reacting to things push blocking people out and just not getting high load uh, etc. So I, I would really encourage you to stop doing it as much so it will not only again, like improve the quality of life of your characters that's a weird way to put it you, you will stop losing your characters as much and then two, it will help you actually improve your defense you will actually get to practice your defense more 
which is incredibly important in this game. Uh, mashing is like something you add on top of a really solid defensive plan that makes them worry about even more options. Uh, which one call it? The other thing we talked about, you, you were asking what to do with Peacock when people are getting a lot closer to you. Uh, sorry. Uh, stuff's coming up. I will try and wrap this up. Oh, blah, 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 blah. You need, you need to stop zoning when stuff is happening right above your head. And honestly, especially depending on the character and the amount of mobility they have, once they even start getting past kind of your M drop range, and especially closer, you need to already be considering, All right, what's my next step? How do I get myself out of the situation? Because Peacock really doesn't like people on her. her. Her DP is obnoxious and kind of annoying to punish, but it also has almost no vertical reach. And especially if you're predictable with it, it's punishable. Um, her scramble tools are pretty good. So you can you, you have a couple different game plans. You have like call a wall, so like call your assist, uh, get Avery out if you have time. Buy yourself time to just get the hell out of dodge, start running away, whether it's either you have place to retreat backwards. Um, and so, again, what we talked about with the round start stuff, you have, like, jump heavy punch, air dash back jump heavy punch, yada yada yada, just ways to really rapidly get yourself away. Or, if they're fighting really hard to get in and you notice they overcommit to going forward, just teleport behind them and then run the other direction, especially if you're stuck in the corner. Um, and that requires a lot of thought process behind what, what have they used, what can they still do, can they do anything after they've committed to this to punish me? Well, that, that sort of kind of thought process. And it, it's really important because Peacock wants to get out. The other option you have is if you have time getting M item out, M item is really oppressive. And if you're holding it over someone's head, the second you see them press a button, you can drop it and it won't go away on hit. So you're just sitting there waiting for it to trade. Even if you get hit, if they open you up, if you're not blocking, uh, it comes down, breaks the combo. GG, shake my hand, I'm running away again. Uh, or you can opt to, to use it to apply pressure. You can use it to run forward if you've gotten the M item out. Because a lot of people will go, oh crap, it's over my head, I can't do anything. And so that allows you to run at them, catch them with a throw or air throw, depending on whether they're grounded or in the air, or letting you high-low them if they're literally just paralyzed there waiting for the item to actually come. Other than that, you can opt to be kind of scrambly. You can try and air to air them, but I, I would recommend uh, if you're gonna opt for any form of violence, get M item out if you can. Sometimes you can't, and then you can kind of just choose violence. But if you can, it will just it will keep you safe. It lets any option you choose be more effective. Uh, yeah, those are those are the two really big things regarding. Well, one was specifically your peacock, the other was in general. Um, if you don't know the other peacock patterns, start learning them. I saw you kind of just default to the one, but it's fine. It's, it's a really effective game plan. Just know how to adapt it once people show they're able to get through your game plan one. Other than that, um, I think those are the main things I was looking at. If you have any other questions or you want me to revisit anything, please let me know.